Welcome to this service for Vocation Sunday and St Matthew's Day, filmed at St Paul's Cathedral in Sale, which is on the grounds, the traditional lands of the Gunai Kurnai nation, particularly the Brayakalang clan, to whom we pay our respects to their elders past and present and emerging, and give thanks for their stewardship of this land and her waterways and we pledge ourselves to walk together to a brighter future, acknowledging that this land always was and always will be First Nations people's land. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, Let us then run our race, laying aside every weight and bringing our sins to the Lord in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace, peace to God's God. people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose spirit the whole body of your church is called into a royal priesthood. Hear our prayer for all members of your church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly serve you, devoutly love you, and faithfully follow in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who through your son Jesus Christ called Matthew from the selfish pursuit of gain to become an apostle and evangelist. Free us from all greed and love of riches so that we may follow the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ in the way of self-giving love who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of Proverbs. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favour and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from one end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. 
And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we anticipate the great feast of St Matthew, apostle, evangelist and martyr, which falls on Tuesday, 21 September. For Gippsland Anglicans, St Matthew's Day coincides with Vocation Sunday, The word vocation can be a little confusing. Have you ever considered a vocation to ministry? Someone might ask us. No, but last year we went to Lord Howe Island. I'm just going to ask the registrar to make the magic happen at this point so that we can watch a short video that explains this concept a little further and hear from Deacon Kate Campbell about her vocation. Greetings on this Vocations Sunday, Sunday each year closest to St Matthew's Day. St Matthew, of course, the tax collector who left his booth to respond to the call of Jesus, to follow him. That's a call that comes to each of us in the church by virtue of our baptism, a call to follow Jesus, to serve God in the church and in the world. And for some of us, that call takes the form of a period of discernment to explore and test a vocation to ordained ministry, that is, to be set apart in the church for the particular office and work of a deacon or a priest or a bishop. As you reflect on what you hear, And as you worship this Vocation Sunday, I invite you to reflect and ponder on the question as to what God might be calling you to do in the church and in the world. What form does your baptismal vocation take? Bless you in that ministry and the Lord be with you. Hi, I'm Kay Campbell and I am an Honorary Deacon in the Faith Community of our beautiful prayer-filled cathedral at St Paul's in Sale. My ministry is varied. I have a distinct ministry as a permanent deacon in formal worship. I also participate and lead contemplative worship, meditation, creative experiences, aged care, pastoral administration. It is rich and varied. For decades I followed my heart, worshipping and engaging with faith communities wherever I I was living with my family. There was a wealth of lay ministry opportunities, all very, very different. After regular suggestions of, have you considered ordination, over many years I was finally stirred enough by a simple question from Dean Susanna to join the discernment, diocesan discernment group to test what my call might be. Lay ministry and ordained ministry both have a place and are equally important and I admit I was content to continue my various lay ministries. It was through consistent prayer and listening to the voices of others that I discovered my call was in fact holy orders. I remember the defined moment in time when it was clear for me and I believe God's time. I had to work through and discover what others saw in me that I didn't see in myself, and I continue to do that. To anyone who might be thinking about testing a call to new ministry, or as I was, needing to work out what God was asking of me, I would say speak to your parish priest and spiritual director, attend to it prayerfully, 
without rushing anything, giving the process time. If you don't have a spiritual director, I encourage you to seek someone out, or at least someone that you can trust. The discernment group is a very helpful way of working through to, to discover where God might be calling you. It may be that you discover it is a lay ministry. It may be that you discover it might be ordained ministry. It is valuable for yourself and others in your ministries if you know what God is asking, what, asking you to do to be as a child of God. It is where you find yourself most content. You never know what God might be leading you to. Remember that laity and ordained ministry are mutually important. It's about discovering where your gifts lay and where you use them in ministry. As we heard from Kate, vocation to ministry is no vacation in the sense of resting from our usual occupation or commitments. If anything, a sense of vocation or calling is a way of resting in our Christian commitment and profession in the sense of that which is professed at our baptism or in the creed. And in discerning a vocation to ministry, we may need to leave some things behind, to vacate a familiar place, as it were, or to let go of some ideas about ourselves. Jesus bowls up to Matthew at his tax booth and without so much as a group certificate, says, follow me. And Matthew does. He just gets up and goes, presumably leaving some poor client halfway through a tax return that they'll have to take up with the ATO. This journey of letting go begins for each of us in the one baptism we share of which the writer to the Ephesians speaks. When we or our godparents were asked, do you turn to Christ? A turning towards, that also entails a turning away. It's a question of basic orientation. On what are we focused? Where are we headed? From whom do we get our cues about our identity and our purpose in life. Last week we heard Jesus' question to Peter, who do you say that I am? And Dean Susanna reframed that for us so helpfully in suggesting that our following of Jesus also tells us something fundamental about who we are. Who does Jesus say that I am, that you are? First and foremost, our baptismal vocation calls us to be human beings. Irenaeus, a bishop in the second century, said, the glory of God is the human being fully alive. Not fully alive in the sense of having everything we're told that we want by advertisers or social media influencers, not fully alive as being in perfect health or somehow free from the limitations of our human condition, rather full of the kingdom life that Jesus came to bring and to share extravagantly with those who know their own need of it, as one who is sick knows their need of a physician. Our first calling then, and in a sense our highest vocation, is to follow the pattern of his authentic humanity, which resisted the injustice or oppressive religiosity that diminished the humanity of others. That the tax collectors and sinners of today's gospel might also experience life in its fullness was so fundamental to Jesus' 
sense of vocation. It cost him his life. A faithfulness unto death that shows us what life really is and what the gift of it is for. The glory of God is the human being fully alive. Last week, Dean Susanna quoted Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a 20th century theologian and martyr who grounded our call to humanity in Christ's own humanity. The Christian, says Bonhoeffer, is not homo religiosus, but simply a human being, as Christ was a human being. It is only by taking life in one stride with all its duties and problems, its successes and failures, that we throw ourselves utterly into the arms of God. That is faith, says Bonhoeffer, and that is what makes a human being and a Christian. If nothing else, this vocation Sunday, take a moment to think about how your own being human is graced and informed by our Lord's being human. Without turning us into homo religiosus, the other important aspect of Christian vocation bubbles up out of those waters of baptism. Baptismal ministry takes many forms. Indeed, there is no ministry in the church that is not baptismal. Any and every service offered, whether or not it has a title, in response to the calling that we are given in baptism to live as a disciple of Christ is a baptismal ministry. Even simply gathering for worship when we're free to do so. As one writer puts it, the baptised gather on a Sunday because they have been called, summoned. If they want entertainment, let them fly to Vegas. If reassurance can soothe their pain, there are a score of chemicals and self-help books which are much cheaper than church. Amen, we all say. No, says this writer, the baptised congregate because they have been called. This is so countercultural to the way people form community today. Being church is not like friending one another on Facebook, whatever that means. Called together. The writer to the Ephesians reminds us that the church is a household of differing and complementary ministries. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, to which we might add lay readers, family workers, parish councillors, mission secretaries, gardeners, caterers, a list that could be extended by as many people who are watching online. Why? Why has God created the church this way? To equip the saints, and that's all of us, in the way the writer to the Ephesians uses the word, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, that is, our service in the world, and for the building up, the full maturing of the body of Christ. One of the ways in which women and men may live out their baptismal profession is by testing a vocation to ordained ministry. Some of us are even paid to do this, or more correctly, providing, provided a living to make it possible. However, flashing red lights here and knowing the registrar, he'll add a special effect to the video at this point. Because we believe 
that all of the baptised participate in the unique high priesthood of Christ, we must avoid the sort of clericalism which has for too long shaped our actual practice and which Maggie Ross parodies when she writes, the ordained clergy do the God business, saying the right prayers, organising good works. In a specialised society, God is better left to the professionals. After all, that's what we hire them for, isn't it? Of course, it's not. Which isn't to say that we're not called to the highest standards of professionalism as prescribed in the ordinal and our codes of conduct and hopefully as written inwardly on the tablet of our hearts, clergy and laity alike. The important thing to remember is that we are all professionals by dint of our baptismal profession which makes us all evangelists in the apostolic church after St Matthew, apostle and evangelist, even martyrs with him in the sense of the Greek word martyreo, to bear witness. What is the fullness of life to which I am called and to which you are called and to which we are called to bear witness in the world. How does the profession of our faith inform what I, what you, profess to be and to do from Monday to Saturday as we grow into the full stature and diversity of the body of Christ? Lord, let me know clearly the person you are calling me to be and the work which you are calling me to do. And grant me every grace I need to answer your call with courage and love and lasting dedication to your will. Amen. We pray for ourselves. God of the sinner, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You called a tax collector to be your follower and friend, and ate with those whom others despised. We pray for all whom we push to the fringes of our society. Those without homes, those without work, prisoners, those suffering from mental illness, those gripped by addictions. God of the outcast, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You did not shun the touch of a bleeding woman, but rewarded her faith with healing and health. We pray for all who suffer. For the lonely and the broken hearted, for those in sickness or in pain, for those afraid or unable to name their own needs. And we pray particularly for those who grieve at this time. God of the wounded, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. You brought a young girl from death to life and you bring us the promise of eternal life. We give thanks for your faithful people of every age. Remembering today particularly St Matthew, 
Help us to follow in faith and hope and love that with all your saints we may be raised up to everlasting life. God of the living and the dead, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His His spirit spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you and and also also with you. you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed Blessed be be God God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks because you have called us into the fellowship of Matthew and all your saints and set before us the example of their witness and the fruit of your spirit in their lives. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night that he was betrayed. Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. 
Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God come. Let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. God, the source of all holiness, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims on earth be welcomed with Matthew and all your saints to the heavenly feast in your kingdom. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. God give you grace to follow Matthew and all the saints in faith and hope and love and to know the fruit of God's spirit in your lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.